This guy goes, I'd rather die than work a nine to five. <laughs> the classic. All right, buckle up. We got a good one today, okay? The, the, the younger generation, including myself, um, we're, seeing through the, we're seeing through the BS, baby. We see beyond the ether. All right. Now, to be fair, I know we all need money out here. If you're new here, welcome. All right. We're just going to talk about this. All right. Don't take any offense, but I get it. Now, this clip here is really going to set the tone because this kid you're going to see here is probably around my age in his mid-30s by now. But this has been happening a long time. Okay. The younger generation saying, fuck everything. All right. This is going to set the tone. Let's have some fun. Recently, after he pointed toward his crotch and yelled, suck it, at a female classmate. So when you say suck it, what are you telling somebody? It's just a gesture. I mean, it's not like I'm, I'm not saying, get your head down there and suck it. He's not the only one out there. His friends, people you see, you know, you hear them in the stores. Uh, hey, where you go? So it's uh, not just him singling out doing it. So we got a generation of kids yelling, suck it. Yeah. So it's no big... She goes, yeah. <laughs> I want you to remember this key phrase. Suck it. All right? Remember that throughout this whole video. All right. This is from Michael Bordenero. He goes, the lazy, the lazy epidemic is making everyone broke. Classic. Now, Michael Bordenero is my guy here. All right? But real fast, before we listen to him, this comment down here goes, nobody wants to work is a scapegoat. The value of hard work is compensation. Where the hell is it? All right. Remember suck it and remember that comment throughout this whole video. Surprised that people are pretty lazy today and don't want to work. You know, we have so many things happening right now where people are just kind of have given up. You know, nobody wants to get the job done properly anymore. And Do you think the U.S. economy right now is in a recession? No, I don't. The unemployment rate is at an all time low in 50 years. I know that the cost of living is high, it's high everywhere. It's expensive to live, but it's not as expensive as it was for my parents when they had a house at 20% for a mortgage. Like, that's what it was. You know what? She's totally right. There's a perfect example of what that lady means. This was sent in on Instagram. It's a studio apartment with zero baths for $1,600 a month. The lady was spot on. The younger generation doesn't know anything. Anyways, <clears throat> I know what you're thinking right now. Suck it, I know. And thank you for sending that into Instagram. I needed a good laugh. <laughs> really made my day. Same guy sent this one in. He goes, have you spoken to some folks that do indeed or have corporate jobs and homes or pay rent, but just sick of the rat race? Maybe they said, screw it and are moving to gig work and living out of their vehicles. Yeah, basically about, uh, I'd say, 25% of society. Now, this one was a really good video. This guy is, I think he's around the age of 30, but this dude's really tapped in. Like, this guy, see, this guy gets it. To the older generation, pressuring them to follow their way. A lot of young people don't want to follow the old way because simply a part of being younger is that you see the patterns of what came before you. You see how it's actually not working out. Yeah, I don't know how many people I, I meet all the time where you just like, you meet an older person, they're like, they, you know, you need to believe in Jesus, or you need to do this, or you need to do that, or work this job, you're gonna be happy, it's, everything's gonna be good. And all I see from these people is sadness, pain, depression. Um, their shit is not in order at all. Their life does not look good. I don't wanna be them whatsoever. Okay, so my boy Michael Bordenero in the beginning of the video, right? Now, this guy is far from lazy. I know this gentleman. He's a cool cat. I like this guy. He's practical. All right? And he works hard. He does. But what, what he, and he did, he did acknowledge in his video that we saw in the beginning that people's wages are not compensating for their work. He acknowledged that. Okay? He, he's, he's one of us. Um, <clears throat> but, but here's the thing is he is just like these younger kids. His full-time job 
is talking to you on the internet. I am no different from any of these younger kids. My full-time job makes no sense talking to you on the internet. Okay. I just want to clarify that. Just we get, we we do get it. A lot of us get it. All right? Uh nothing's making sense anymore. And what this gentleman just said makes all the sense in the world. Because when somebody who's 55 or 65 tries to tell me to go work a fucking job, especially a 9 to 5, no offense, I actually recommend you probably keep that right now. The economy ain't looking too hot. Uh, definitely wouldn't just quit, all right? I don't think things are going to be good. Hold on to that money. But I do understand. When an older person says to me when I was younger, just go go into this field and do this job and like just get this job that I fucking hate and work it the, my, your whole life and become fat like me. No offense. I don't mean to say it like that, but that's kind of that's kind of how we see it. And we just want to say, suck it. Yeah. Anyways, just to paint some picture here. All right? Because I, I, I get why people are snapping out of this shit. I do understand. Really? So an hour of your life is worth $15. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it 20 Oh, you made rent this month. Congratulations. Looks like you'll be here for another month. That's awesome. Nah, that's all right. You're used to the precarious life, aren't you? Look, just keep working hard, okay? Yo, homie just said precarious. What a dick. Pay your dues. Who knows? Maybe when you're 60, 70, 75, you'll be able to afford your home. Just in time for death. Everything's fine. It's just your one precious chance at life. But hey, what you're doing is good for the economy, okay? You just gotta grind harder, is all. I'm only two years into... He, I know he was being very sarcastic, but he's got a point. It's almost like if trying really hard isn't working, then why try really hard? Or why really not be lazy and go for it in something that's not working? Why not take that same energy and do it towards something else that isn't working either, but it's a lot more fun? It does make sense. I do get it. Anyways, back to the 9 to 5. This chick hates it. <laughs> I'm working my 9 to 5 job, and this is awful. So you're telling me I'm having the Sunday scaries every week to dread five days of my life to then be rewarded with a little thrill on Friday, but then be so tired from working that I pass out at like 10 p.m. Live for Saturdays, love them. But really, that is only one full day of fun because Sunday, have a great Sunday morning. This bitch is out here having fun. That's bullshit. And then Sunday afternoon rolls around and I have the Sunday scaries and I'm dreading my life for the next five days. I went to college for four years to be stuck in this cycle. What? No, two years is enough. So I'm on TikTok and I'll be promoting products and posting my way out of this god awful cycle. I cannot settle for a life of dread. Especially yeah, her and millions of other people. And like I said, I don't blame them. I actually get it. And this chick look like, looks like she's having a great time. Ago, I quit my corporate nine to five because I finally saved up enough to leave and now I'm on a lake in Guatemala kayaking for three dollars and life is fantastic. I think quite honestly this is the happiest I've been in a minute. I never want a nine to five again. I'm done. Over it. I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. Like how is this sustainable? Well let's rewind it back. Um, if you, if Most jobs aren't seeming to work out either so it's almost like which unsustainable path do you want to take that's kind of where the world's at hey i'm just hey I'm, just, I'm having a great time and i'm at the point where it's just like the kid said in the beginning suck it <laughs> seriously all right this person josh goes this is from a previous video he goes i love to work i'm tired of being employed it gets me nowhere um, I'm lessening expenses, working on starting a business, and trying to homestead. Yeah, it's not that people don't want to. It's not that people don't want to do anything. They just don't want to do it for your business. That sucks. Not you. I'm saying like some other corporate entity. Uh, this person goes. I'm typing this on the way to work. I do not want to work. Not for myself. Not for anybody. Not at all. I do not enjoy working, and would love the opportunity not to. 104 likes classic hey seriously that this kid this guy he and he's going to work <laughs> sorry he doesn't have a job um this one had an excellent point though back to what i was saying all right you should probably keep your job 
This person has a good point. One thing harder than living paycheck to paycheck is living without a paycheck. Uh, the nine to five job is dying. I hate to keep harping on the nine to five, but the lady's got a damn point. And if you're older, Gen X or Boomer watching this, don't take any offense to this. Back when y'all were growing up, this made sense. Anyways, whatever. Five job feels like the worst way to achieve financial freedom. Not to mention the fact that it feels like there's no job security anymore. Not only nine to five, which is really an eight to six or an eight to seven, there's no time to do anything after work. I like the idea of an alternate career path giving me more time to do what I want to do and also not capping my income. Okay, and I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. How do I know what you're thinking? Guys, how do I know? Guys, how do I know what they're thinking over here? We need doctors. We need tradesmen. We need lawyers. Yes, we fucking do. I totally agree. I do. But maybe, just maybe, if we have less of them, less doctors, maybe less, maybe we'll be inclined to be healthier. Yeah? Yeah? And less lawyers, maybe we won't all just sue each other all the time. You ever think about that? Less tradesmen, maybe they'll get paid what they're worth. Instead of having to build 10 homes a year to make a living, maybe they could build three homes a year to make a living. Yeah? Did you ever think about that? What about the old times when the doctors used to make house calls and they worked for themselves and they were working out of like a car and they're just showing up to people's homes? Whatever happened to that? Oh, it's not practical. You can't make enough money doing that. See what I'm saying? So, yes, we agree. We need people. Absolutely. But at the same time, it's like, do we though? Anyways, upward and onward. This one was really good. I like this. So I'm going to sum this up. It basically goes, at my 9 to 5, you finish your work in about 2 hours, but you're required to work 8 hours shift. That's called running the clock. Remember what I just said about building two homes in a year versus 10 or like, you know, uh, lawyers. I don't know if you've ever worked at a law firm. I did. A lot of milk in the clock going on there. A lot of unnecessary bullshit going on. And you know, they get paid by hour, right? Not per job. Okay. I'm just making points here because I see what a lot of you guys see. I get it. Holy fuck. <laughs> Makes sense to me. I'm not coming back to the job. They don't know that. This guy's having a spiritual awakening. Him and about a billion other people. But I'm not coming back. It's funny how I was able to keep the story of this job going for so long and maintain this job, right? When I wasn't really having a, an awakening, when I wasn't really connecting with self but now that i've been connecting with self and got a preview of like true bliss and just true excitement and truth now it's like this job is unfucking bearable i i just cannot fathom spending another second there you know what's really crazy too think about how many homeless people there are yeah they all had real spiritual awakenings i'm just kidding i'm not kidding they actually did People would rather be homeless at this point than go back. And not to mention drugs are involved. But I'm just saying, this is a big, this is a big fucking thing. It's happening and the party's starting. I'm ready to fucking, I'm ready to get loose. Anyways, so what I'm trying to say is, it makes sense. Like, I get it. He's absolutely right. Like, but at the same time, it's, you know, I kind of like money and I like living in a house, so... You know, I've worked the shit job. I am that guy. This dude goes, I am self-employed, but I will be honest with you. If I ever had to get a real job again, I would struggle with it. The big, biggest problem I can recall from having a job years ago was that you always had people above you were, who are absolutely awful, clueless, pretty useless, and more of these qualities that they have had. The more power they seem to have over you in the company. Couple this, uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh, you have very little freedom, and I would not want to work anymore either, or either, whatever. He's got a point, man. Once you work for yourself, it's really difficult to go back. Like, I'm the type of guy where the moment I was able to work for myself years ago, I had a resale business online, like eBay and shit. Um, 
I was making less than my bartending job, but I was so much happier that I was willing to make less money and be happy. And at one point I just did both jobs at the same time. I was killing it, but it was, it's true. It's hard to go back. It really is. It's really fucking difficult. Yeah. And some people were like, would rather just be yeah. unemployed. <laughs> so whatever. Anyways, back to this guy. I'm going to leave the link to this video down below. Cause this dude really fucking nailed it on the head. This reality designers guy. Um, but yeah, this dude really nailed it. The level project or judge them that they don't know anything at all. So young people, they feel that they feel all this pressure. They feel all this overwhelm. The economy is not what it used to be. The job market's not what it used to be. You're not going to buy a home. Just forget it. You're going to live in a tiny home, which I would love to. He goes, you're not going to buy a home. Forget it. Um, you know, like I said, the job market's not the same. Everything's gone up in prices. And you have, you're just kind of starting out. Work your nine. <sighs> I highly recommend you guys go watch that dude's video. I'll leave it down below. But he's absolutely right. He, he, he's not tripping. And I'm not saying you can't buy a house. I do think we will be able to. Maybe. Possibly. Um, I, I'm still delusional enough to go like, I'm going to make it. Um, and I think you kind of have to, to be that way. And, uh, this lady, I really resonate with what she's about to say. Cause I know a lot of you guys want to do your own thing or you don't want to do the traditional route. Um, but what this lady has got to say is, is true. And it's not as easy. Uh, it's not easy. Nothing's fucking easy. None of it. It's all hard. It all sucks. It doesn't suck. But it's all really hard. So this this person hit it on the head too. Nine to five and see, okay, what else do you like to do that you can do on your free time that could potentially lead somewhere, that could potentially get you out of your nine to five job and you know, make you more money or just plain make you happier. So I always say that when I had, my, you know, my restaurant job, I was doing makeup on the side. I was doing on, online training on the side. Like I was doing multiple things to bring in revenue so that I didn't just depend on one revenue first off. And second off, that way I knew I was building into something, whether or not it would have been the makeup taking off, whether or not been me built making my own restaurant or, you know, I went with the online training route, but. Okay. So notice how she said multiple streams of income. Most people are going to have to do that now. So if you don't want like the traditional, just one career, you're probably going to need a, a couple of streams, a few streams of income. Like what I'm doing here. I also have a second YouTube channel. I also have a Patreon. I, I'm also getting monetized over here. I'm starting to get paid to do stand up shows. Okay. I'm going to try and sell some merch. I don't know if that's going to work out too well, but I'm going to fucking try. I'm trying to stretch it out because I don't have a normal job. And the only way to not have a normal job, unless you're in the trade business, but even tradesmen, even if you're a plumber, I mean, your range of your, your umbrella is pretty big. There's a lot of jobs you could do under that umbrella. It's not just fixing toilets. It's, that's kind of my point. And, and she's also right. I worked at a restaurant for years. I'd get off work. I'd work some more. I'd work before I went to work on my own business. But the truth is, is most people don't want to go to work all day, get off, and then work some more for free. But if you're willing to do that, the payoff's awesome. All right. This is a perfect example of somebody starting a business. It took my dad 13 years to start his own concrete business. And yet, he still works from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thanks to that, we are all well off, pretty comfortable. People think that working two to three years in any job is going to make you rich. People don't understand how many sacrifices you have to make to make it. Unfortunately, nothing in life is fair or easy. Remember that. Holy shit. <sighs> Take a hit. I'm just kidding. Metaphorically speaking, of course. <sighs> Here's another one too. We're gonna we're winding this down here. We got one more comment after this. This person goes, I'm in the military and consider it a consistent reminder that I've failed at life and I've reached the end of my rope. Holy shit, it's Alec Baldwin. I don't know how many times I'm going to get that comment. <sighs> it's crazy that people in the military feel like they're a loser when they should be an upstanding, you know, member of society. But then again, you have that other aspect where it's like, 
I don't know what to do with my life. I'll go to the military. <laughs> Ten hut. You know? Um, but, like, if you go to the military, you, sh like, you shouldn't even have to worry about getting another job. That's the funniest part. That's where society's at. It's hilarious. I would never join the military, by the way. That sounds god-awful. Like, die for you guys? You would never die for me. See what I'm saying? If anything, they should be saluting me. I'm paying their fucking bills. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. Calm down. All right, we're going to end on this note because this is important. All right? A lot of people want to, like, just waltz in somewhere and get a job or try and get a job. But the truth is it's not what you know. It's who you know. Anyways, this person goes, at first, I didn't get your sense of humor. I didn't really like you. <laughs> she goes, but now I think you're funny. She goes, anyways, she's 53, blah, 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 blah. We're going to skip forward. She goes, I was laid off of IT five weeks ago, and I kicked it into high gear while I was working those last few weeks to find a new one. Never applied to a remote job like everyone else. I worked, this is important, she worked those contacts like I said. So basically, I said, you're, you're better off getting a job just by knowing somebody, even if you've never been in the industry. So for instance, I could have gotten a sales job at six figures a year simply because I knew the owner of the business and he liked me. You see what I'm saying? So there's plenty of people in your phone that you probably know. You're not even thinking about it. That's your best bet if you are looking for a job out here. Anyway, she goes, I got four opportunities to engage with these companies. Within one week, got two offers and a chance to interview for the last time. She, start, um, she goes, she just started a new job last Monday. It's a 30K a year pay cut, but it feels like a safe place. Love and respect. Anyways, I don't know. You guys leave your thoughts. I'm just kind of like, I, I totally do understand. A lot of the shit don't make sense. And the fact that we're probably not going to retire, um, you know, whatever job you do decide to do, make sure it's something you kind of enjoy. Uh, even if you got to take a pay cut, I know that doesn't make sense. Um, the, you don't have to take my advice. I really don't care. We're just spitballing here. We're just talking. This isn't even really advice. I'm just trying to, I, I'm trying to, I'm here with you. I'm just as confused as everybody else. Anyways, check out my second channel, a little bit shorter clips, more uh, more personal. Um, it's fun. We talk about serious stuff and, you know, like to have a good time. <sighs> Hell of a talk. Shout out to my Patreon members. I love you guys. Solid shit, man. You know what? Just quit your job. Fuck it. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. I highly recommend you don't quit your job. Um, at least not now. Wait until they lay you off. I'm just kidding. <laughs>